fractions lesson 3.3. In this lesson, we want you to develop an algorithm. Now, an algorithm is nothing more than a fancy word that means a uh, process to multiply fractions. Students will use common factors to cancel numerators and denominators to simplify fractions before multiplication. And we'll get to that in a moment. So, Bob, before we can do this, I need you to be able to reduce a fraction. So, I don't know if you can remember how to do it, but in order to reduce a fraction, there are basically um, several ways of doing it, but the easiest way is called a step-down procedure. You want to find the number that goes into 4 and 8 evenly, one single number. So take a look at the factors of 4. They are 1, 2, and 4. Well, if I divide both by 1, it won't help. I can divide both by 2. So 4 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. And 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. Now, 4 goes into the still, sorry, they both can be divided by 2 again. So the answer is 1 out of 2. So 2 over 4 is actually 1 over 2. A 12 over 36, same thing. Find a number that goes into both. My advice, use even numbers first because they're the simplest. Use 2, 3s, and 5s. So divide by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 36 divided by 2 is 18. They're both still even. So divide by 2 again. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And 3 will go into both of these. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And the last one, you've got a 5 stuck out in the front, but that's not part of the fraction, but you cannot forget it. So I'm going to take 12 and 18. They're both even, so I'm going to divide by 2. So that gives me 5 stays the same. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Now, 6 and 9 both can be divided by 3. That leaves me with 5. Don't forget it. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So reducing is 5 and 2 thirds. Okay? Now, common factors. Um, we're, you have to know how to do this because we're going to use this when we do addition. So, common factors. First off, let's start out, start out with what is a factor. Remember, we did this before a couple lessons ago. A factor is a number that divides in evenly. Now, we've used this definition before. So, what are the factors of 6? Well, we do them in pairs with the rainbow method. 1 and 6, and 2 and 3. Those are the factors of, uh, of 6. All right. Now, common factors are factors in two, so there are factors which are the same, or which, uh, this is this way, factors which appear in both numbers. They're common to both numbers. So let's take a look at 6 and 8. We know the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. We just did that right here. The factors of 8 are 1 and 8, and then 2 times 4. So those are my factors of 8. Now, which one is the common factors? Well, that means which ones are in both lists? Well, 1 is, uh, 2 is. That's it. Which one of these is the greatest? That's 2. Okay, I've done one of them. Let's have you try this one here, 12 and 24. Okay, the factors of 12 are 1 and 12. 2 goes into it 6 times. 3 goes into it 4 times. There we go. The factors of 24 are 1 and 24, because 1 times 24. 2 times 12. 3 times 8 and 4 times 6. The common factors, take a look at the list. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. The greatest common factor is 6. Okay. Some of you noticed as we were doing the other drawings of the grids that there seemed to be a shorter way to do it. And there is. Let's take a look at the, multi the product of 2 thirds times 1 fifth. When we did this as a grid, you took two out of three rows and one out of five columns, then you counted it. But some of you realized that really what was happening is you were taking the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. So you take your first fraction, which in this case right here, and there's your second fraction. You just do the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. And whatever the answer is, that's your answer. 
So take a look at two-thirds times one-fifth. We could have drawn a whole bunch of pictures, but we also could just take two times one over three times five. Two times one is two. Three times five is five. Now, does it reduce? It does not reduce, so your answer is two-fifths, two-fifteenths. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Very simply put, I've got one-third. You copy the question down. You're not allowed not to. Times three-fifths. That's equal to one times three over three times five. Now, you'll notice something. There's a three in the top and in the bottom. This is what we talked about by simplifying when you multiply. Three divided by three is one. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. You could cancel this and change the question to 1 over 1 times 1 over 5. So then you get 1 times 1 over 1 times 5. Now, what I've just done there is, a, is basically a simplification. You don't have to do it if you know how to do a reduction. If you know how to reduce fractions, you can just stick with the first one. 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 5 is 15. And now you have to reduce this. You have to realize 3 and 15 are both divisible by 3. Right. That's what I did here. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. Here is 3 divided by 3 is 1. I did it there. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So your answer is 1 fifth. And if you look down here, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 5 is 5. The answer is the same. Okay? Now the reducing I just did up here, so we don't have to worry about that. Next question. This is what I was talking about earlier. All right, and this is why this works. Anything divided by itself is equal to 1. Now, we know the commutative property of multiplication means that you can switch things around. So I want you to think of 1 over 3 times 3 over 5. That's top times top. That's what we get here, bottom times bottom. But what if I change the 1 and the 3 around here and change it to 3 times 1 over 1, sorry, over 3 times 5? Now, what is 3 over 3? Well, 3 over 3 is 1, isn't it? And anything to multiply by 1 is 1 fifth. That's where the simplification comes in. You don't have to do it. Okay? You can do it um, just by doing it the old-fashioned way. All right, I want you to multiply this. You can choose to do multiplication by, sorry, you can do the redu reducing before you multiply, or you can do it at the end. It's your choice. All right, so now that you've paused it, the easiest way is this. Top times pop. Bottom times bottom, 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 4 is 12, and now you have to reduce it. 2 goes into both, so your answer is 1 sixth. How am I going to mark this? Top times top, bottom times bottom, the fraction you got, the reducing. How's that? Okay. Now, take a look at the next one, pause the recording and do it. All right. So I'm going to do it the old way first, and then I'm going to do a canceling way, okay? So first off, 3 times 2 over 4 times 9. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 9 is 36. You can divide both of these by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 36 divided by 6 is 6. So your answer is 1 sixth, okay? Now that's one way, all right? We can still do it a different way. What if we were to cancel, all right? Now 3 and 9 are both divisible by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 2 and 4 are both divisible by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now let's take a look at our numbers. 1 times 1 over 2 times 3. Your answer, 1 sixth. And you should notice the answer is the same. Your choice. You don't have to do it. You know, the second way, you can do it the first way if you're happy. Okay, in a candy store, two-thirds of the candy contain chocolate. Of these, three-quarters contain nuts. What fraction of the candy in the store contains nuts? So, solve this problem. I'll give you a hint. It's multiply. Okay, setting it up. Two-thirds times three-quarters. Now, if you want to, you can cancel the threes. I'm not going to do it that this way. I'm just going to go two times three over... 3 times 4. 2 times 3 being 6. 3 times 4 being 12. These are both divisible by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So, one half of the candy in the store have nuts. Has nuts, I guess. Alright, so have you tried these two, three questions? 
All right, let's take a look. Easiest way, I'm going to do 4 times 5 over 5 times 6, so that's 20 over 30. I can divide both of these by 10, and that gives me 2 thirds. The next one, 4 times 1 over 7 times 3, that's 4 over 21, it doesn't reduce. The next one, 2 times 7 over 11 times 8, that gives you 14 over 88, and that is dividing both by 2. That gives me 7 over 44 is my final answer. Okay, so if you're not sure how I did that, review it, try it again, and make sure you can do it. Okay, here's the last one. Try this one. Okay, set everything up. 2 times 5, yes, you have to copy it out. times 5 is 10, 5 times 2 is 10. Anything divided by itself is 1. Here's your answer. Okay, <clears throat> now this one's a tricky question because it says how much does he have left? He spends what he has left. So you got to be very careful how you set this up. So Bob went shopping with his daily allowance of $200. He spends half his money at Walmart. So let's find out how much he spent at Walmart. So Walmart is $200 times 1 over 2. Now, if you want to do this as fraction times fraction, remember that every whole number is over 1. Okay? So that means we have 200 times 1 over 1 times 2. So that's 200 over 2, which means we have $100 spent. That's what he spent. Now, that means how much does he have left? Well, he had $200 take away the 100 he spent, means we now have $100 left. Now, he takes that $100 and he goes to Superstore. And he's going to buy one-fifth, spend one-fifth of it. All right, so I need to find 100 times one-fifth. Remember, 100 is over 1. So this is 100 times 1 over 1 times 5. That's 100 over 5, which is $20. So he spends $20. What does he have left? Well, he had 100. Take away 20. He's now at $80 left. Now, he then spends 3 eighths at the movies. I'm going to get you to finish that off. 3 eighths. He has $80. And he spends 3 eighths of it. To finish that off. Okay. So 80 is over 1. That gives us 80 times 3, 1 times 8, that's 240 over 8. 240 divided by 8 is $30. I'm going to divide both of these by 8, by the way. All right, so that gives me 30 over 1, which is equal to 30. Now, remember, that's what he spent. How much does he have left? Well, he had 80. He spent 30 at the movies. That means he has $50 left. All right? Reading is very critical. If you have any trouble, watch it again. If not, see you in Lesson 3.4.